Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Folks, this is Memorial Day. Memorial Day has been, ce- been celebrated for a number of years. In, all, in fact, in all due respect, pretty well started uh, back during the Civil War, back in the Civil War, and, uh, and there's a lot of history on Memorial Day. We celebrate it on an ongoing basis here in this country. Uh, and, and one of the things we're going to be doing in this particular segment of the show is that we're going to basically talk a little bit about Memorial Day and, and its importance and, um, and just sort of educate the public at large in terms of why one should possibly visit and recognize what Memorial Day is on. It's really a part of this country, very, very much so. So joining me in this particular segment, I've got, I've got a guy, you, you see this poppy that I have in my hand. This is a poppy, and I'll let him spend a couple of minutes when, about this, what this poppy is and what it represents. But I've got Bruce Hall here, who is a member of the VFW. In fact, he's, a, he's the chairman. Is that what you call it? Commander. Commander. Commander of, this, of, of, of a chapter here within the North Portland area, North Portland area. And we're going to get together with him. That's 1325. I still remember that number, Bruce. You know that? <laughs> it's good. Okay. And then we got Don Dupay. You've seen Don be- before. He and Ter- Teresa Dupay. And, and the, these folks here, they're, they're artists in their own line. But the bottom line is that uh, uh, we're going to maybe talk a little bit about their stories in, in regards to how they relate to people to, and how they relate and, and how do they define Memorial, a Memorial Day. Okay. So with that, why don't we start off by, uh, uh, let's, let's maybe get uh, get Bruce to, to start off with uh, with the, basically what you do. No, better yet, better yet, let's talk about a little history. Uh, we were talking a little bit right before the show. We were talking about how did it all generate it. And, and what we did was that Teresa went on, on air, so to speak, on air. Everybody knows what on air means, right? You got me our own dictionary, defined it. And she basically got some background on what... Um, what Memorial Day was all about. Let, let her read the passage. So, set it up. M- the first American Memorial Day was commemorated Monday, um, May 1st, 1865, and it was created by f- um, former black slaves. And this occurred in Charleston, South Carolina, to honor 257 dead Union soldiers who had been buried in a mass grave in a Confederate prison camp. They dug up the bodies and worked for two weeks to give them a proper burial as gratitude for fighting for their freedom. Together with teachers and missionaries, black residents of Charleston organized a May Day ceremony that year, which was covered by the New York Tribune and other national papers. So um, basically Memorial Day was started by by African Americans. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and th- there's an importance to that peace aspect of it. Yeah, you know? there is. Because there's a history, a history within our country that we tend not to want to recognize. Mm-hmm. And especially during these times, it's very, very important that we do that. In fact, this should be in our classrooms. In fact, yes. we shouldn't be thinking about someone basically posting this information. That should have been yeah. taught. Had it been taught, in all due respect, people would understand what that's all about, the unification of this country. Because right now, we're going into this situation trying to figure out people not even want to respect our flag, not mm-hmm. respecting the flag. People are kind of going to the individual cultures aspect of it. And that's really not what this country was all about. It was about all yeah. of us together. It was about English as a first language. You know, mm-hmm. now we're getting into we're getting into that mm-hmm. argument about yeah. English as a second language, and it just goes on and on. Now we've got the whole idea about about the undocumented workers, where many of them were Mexicans, and you see the the flag. They're promoting their culture, and the, and that's not really what we're all about. I mean, you do have we we have amendments. You know, we have the Constitution, and the bottom line is the First Amendment stays right up front: freedom of speech. And we can do that, but you're doing it under, uh, as an American and under the American flag. So, so I want to make that point across uh, before we get into the the, the issue of uh, now uh, Memorial Day because it's being celebrated Monday. This is this is being televised this Sunday here live aspect of it. But I think it's very important that we spend some, that we spend some time and we understand what this country is all about. Okay. That being said, let's go down to to Memorial uh, to the uh, Memorial Day ceremony aspect of it. I might add too, right before I, uh, we had the opportunity to go down to City Hall, thinking about mm-hmm. uh, and actually going down to Willamette this 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 past week, Friday. Yeah, went down there Friday. Uh, went down to Willamette and also went down to the uh, uh, to the Vietnam Memorial. I saw in that downtown. Mm-hmm. Remember that one? Yeah. It's in post, and you can get that by the way. Just just go to face uh, go to YouTube, right, and check that out. I'll get it posted. It's mm-hmm. already yeah. posted. 
But the bottom line is that uh, there was no one at the at the uh, Vietnam Memorial aspect of it. And when I went down to see my son, there was not that many people there during that particular time, also too. But so uh, many people don't really really know the, again the essence and the importance. So the idea is that that place should have been one. It should have been promoted. It should yeah. have been promoted before that aspect, yeah, because normally on Monday uh, is normally the main say is the Willamette. Willamette, Willamette National Cemetery, and some three thousand. It's been said that some three thousand people or so are going to be basically attending, you know, wow. and their, their loved ones or whatever. But it should have started really Friday or so. But we went down to City Hall, mm -hmm. and um, and the, the mayor wasn't there, but his chief of staff, one of his deputy chief of staff, was there. And we said to them, we shared with them from the standpoint that it would have been a neat thing if they had announced it on on Wednesday, because normally they have the full council meeting, the public. Remember that morning, whatever. If it was announced that Wednesday, that would have been on cable aspect of it, and and maybe hold a press conference, talk a little bit about it at that point in time, and then at the same time uh, uh, do the same thing on Friday. Maybe do the the half mass of the flags mm -hmm. here within the mm -hmm. city of Portland on Friday. <coughs> uh, you know, maybe Wednesday, whatever. But but then people will be asking the question, well, why is there a half mass? Well, that's the whole idea of having the press Sorry conference. About it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was, then all of a sudden, now pe then people will be saying, well, fine, maybe I should go today as opposed to going Monday. And that kind of a deal and whatever. And uh, I think that's a very, very important feel. In fact, on that same note, we, we, we'd gone down to OPB the other day and some time ago, Oregon Public Broadcasting, to try to give them the importance of why we should have a veteran kind of a show talking about vets and issues, and et cetera, et cetera. This would have been a good show yeah. for OPB to, to a broadcast. However, we're going to have to go back down there and see if we might be able to get them motivated to do something along <laughs> that particular line. So that's, okay, that's the history in terms of what, why we think we, that should be promoted. That's why we're doing this today. Right. This is on a Sunday. Memorial Day is on a Monday. And normally people celebrate it. And it shouldn't be taken lightly like it's just a day off mm -hmm. and everybody's barbecuing and this, right. that, and the other. It's not, this is not about a barbecue day. It's talking about the history of this country yeah. and the folks who have given up their lives, if you will. And whether they were, were in combat or not, but they were in the armed forces. Yeah. Yeah. And it's very important that we understand that. It's, and, and so that's a very important piece. So It's, a, it's important for, for, for us who are veterans right. to to keep it up there in the public eye because we are the ones that survived. Right. There's tombstones out there that we all look at and memorialize are the ones that didn't make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I never got shot at officially, but I was in the Cold War, which is a war everybody has forgotten about mm -hmm. from 1956 to 1959. So I was already finished with my military service by the time Vietnam came along. Mm -hmm. But it's important for us who survived, yourself, myself, to keep this in the public eye. Yes, yes, yes. And it's important, like you said, not to not to consider mm -hmm. it as just a day off to barbecue. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I was a child in the 70s, my dad, every Memorial Day, um, me and my eight sisters and brothers would get together and um, we would pick flowers and pick roses and we would all go to the cemetery and we would lay flowers on the graves of the fallen soldiers. And that's what we did every Memorial Day for several years. That was what we did every year. Well, Bruce, let's bring you in, in right now since we, we talked about this. You know, he's, he's dressed up today. I mean, I, I know Bruce, I happen to be a part of that unit. And I would even, I would even suggest and, 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 uh, that uh, veterans who are out here and you're wanting to meet other veterans, which helps them out. You got the thing called PTSD, and then a lot of times that really helped because that means they're able to join an organization that's veterans of foreign wars. Yeah. But the bottom line, can anybody join, Bruce? Even if, if you're a veteran, can you join? Or do you, is it? You have to be a veteran of a foreign war. You have to be a veteran of a foreign war. But you don't have a problem with, with a guest or something, people coming over. No. Okay, right, 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 right. But um, but ch chat a little bit. One, talk about your history a little bit. Okay. Uh, Basically, uh, the Veterans of Foreign War has a program called the Buddy Poppy, which was started way back in 1922. And uh, they've had a national campaign of Buddy Poppy's distribution since 1924. The American Legion also has a, a poppy program also. But the Buddy Poppies that we have in the VFW are made in White City, Oregon at the rehab center for the VA out of Medford. A former military base. Former military base. <laughs> yep. 
but making these buddy poppies, it's therapy for the the disabled vets with the use their hands. Mm -hmm. Then they get two. They say they have two cents. They make like two cents spending money for making them. Oh. And then the VFW Post purchased the buddy poppies at a hundred fifty dollars a thousand. And then when we distribute them, we put them out there, and we uh, uh, people donate. No donation, but we went. You don't force them to donate. No, you just give, you just give them the poppies. Right, we right? Give, we give them the poppies. Right, and they uh, the funds that are collected are for uh, to help the needy vets and their families during the year. Mm -hmm. So it's a total program, mm -hmm. and that's uh, basically what the buddy poppies right. are all about. Right, 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 right. Well, yeah, like I said, that, that it's kind of neat to be able to do it. And you participate in parades and. I know that because I participated in some of those parades and handing out those poppies and like uh, like, like St. John's Parade and I think it was the other Hollywood Parade and, and you're all over the place. And right. You, you're down in the, in the... I remember those when I was a child, a small boy, poppies on on the Memorial Day. So they've been around a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why did they select poppies? Any particular reason? Because poppies were in France and if you know the the poem Flan Flanders Fields, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where it originated. Yeah. And they started, uh, the French people started it as a method of taking care of children and stuff, and it sort of uh, came over to America, mm -hmm. and the VFW picked it up, mm -hmm. and so it continued from that, but mm -hmm. it's, it's related to the poppy fields of France and Belgium. Okay, okay, okay. Talk a little bit about the Veterans of Foreign War, the organization itself. Talk a little bit about that organization. Well, the Veterans of Foreign War, it's, uh, it's, it's a non it's a non-profit organization. Mm -hmm. Henceforth, people think it's a, an organization to help veterans. Well, mm -hmm. we do help veterans. We have service officers that help them file claims and follow this type of work up. We actually we're involved with a lot of community projects which basically your nonprofits have to do community services and stuff in order to keep their nonprofit status. And uh, so we're involved with, my, my, my aim as a commander is we do a lot of work with young people because mm -hmm. the youth are the future of our nation. I go to elementary schools and I have a little veterans program. I teach the kids what a veteran is, mm -hmm. what veterans have done, how they got their freedom. Uh, the Buddy Poppy program, Wonderful. how it's utilized. I did a school over in North Portland this last the last three years. Mm -hmm. Talked about 100 fourth and fifth graders. And each year, after talking to these kids, I get like 40, 45 letters, thank you letters from these fourth and fifth graders. And you can tell by reading these letters that they were very attentive and it, it mm -hmm. was a valuable time. Mm -hmm. So uh, and then we, we, we sponsor an essay contest for high school kids called Voice of Democracy. Mm -hmm. And if students win the national, pot, uh, national prize, it's a $30,000 scholarship. Mm -hmm. And then we have a Patriot Pen essay contest for middle school, which is called the Patriot Pen. And that's a three to four hundred word essay, and they get a five thousand dollars cash prize if they win the national. Mm -hmm. and there's numerous levels. There's a post, district, state competition, so mm -hmm. they they have opportunity to win at each level. And then uh, also uh, another thing, uh, our particular post at fifteen to twenty years, we've sponsored a Little League Baseball team, mm -hmm. which a, a lot of businesses sponsor Little League Baseball teams. But we, I believe in sponsoring, not just sponsor it, mm -hmm. not just put VFW on their uniform. Mm -hmm. I go to their games, and then I take these 11, 12-year-olds in the St. John's Parade every year. We, we buy 2,000 flags, and we have the 11, 12-year-olds distribute these flags mm -hmm. uh, in the St. John's Parade. 
and then after the parade, we treat them at McDonald's. And, and so it, trying to... But the idea is to educate them about teach them to, form yeah, yeah, let them Tell know what, what veterans means, have what done, what, meant, what yeah. veterans are, you know. Right, 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 right. And yeah. associate them with veterans. Right, so, right. Because it's, be, it's become a lost thing, I mean, in a lot of cases, because our educational system and stuff hasn't really... Uh, well, you make favorite veterans. Well, in all due respect, you make a point. One, one we don't we don't have the draft anymore. Yeah. Like uh, we don't have the draft. The other thing is that, uh, again, because of the background of our young folks who are coming today. In fact, even the ones who are in positions of power, so to speak, they they, they too didn't participate yeah. in the military, and so therefore, in ROTC, I remember as a recruiter, when a Marine recruiter, when I came to, to Portland, Oregon, that was no problem. It was a very positive environment. Uh, as far as the school, you know, as far as the, as far as the, uh, the, the, the uh, recruiters and the like and whatever. And, uh, and not a school, a number of the schools, in fact, one of the schools, I came from the South. Sure. And I was part of ROTC when I was in high school. So I, I you know, I had this, this training and aspect, which was good. You know, learning how to respect the uh, firearms and things like that, how to shoot, this, that, and the other, and what it meant. But, uh, but again, it was reserve officer training. That was a ROTC, Reserve Officer Training Corps. So in all due respect, they give you a lot of points even when you join the, the military. Sure. You can go to OCS if you want to, and a whole bunch of other things. But uh, but we don't have that same atmosphere. We, in all due respect, we need to get back to that atmosphere. So the idea is to educate. This is not about just going out and just saying, let's have war aspect of it. No, this is just part of our country because people died, and, and the majority of the people didn't go overseas and participate in, the, in, this, in these wars, but people had to die to maintain this country. And they need to understand what that was all about. It's not about folks running around just picking up the wars aspect of it, but that's a, that's a very important. Even the president, our president, President Obama was never in the military. You know, yeah. a lot of the folks who are sitting in position. In fact, our, our, our mayor right here locally uh, was not, was, had not, not participated in the, in, the, in the military. The mayor to be is not. So, so you can just go right down the line. Very few people are still there. So it's very important on these days, these days like Memorial Day, we need to educate the public, our young people, and our kids, and whatever. So I'm talking to the seniors out there right now who, who had these kids, who participated in the wars. They need to spend a little bit more time educating the folks, and that's a very, very important piece. So uh, you mentioned ROTC. Well, our, our post, we also are involved with ROTC over at the University of Portland. Yeah, yeah, right. They have uh, Army and Air Force, mm -hmm. and so we present some awards to the top two uh, ROTC cadets each year at their awards banquet. Mm -hmm. So a couple of years ago I was talking, I was thinking about judges for our essay contest mm -hmm. and it was always a struggle to find people to judge the essays. Yeah. yeah. So I got thinking one day, well, these cadets, they're, they're academic, they're uh, patriotic. So I went to the, went to them and I use like six cadets every year to judge mm -hmm. my essays. Mm -hmm. And they really enjoy doing it. They do receive, they enjoy it? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. We get together and it only takes a couple, three hours and they, they do both the, the high the school schools, and the Are the schools school. receiving you well in regards to some of the programs? That's, that's another story. That's another story. Like I, what? I take information. What about Portland Public Schools? What about Portland Public I, Schools? I, I, I go to Jefferson, Roosevelt, De La Salle North, mm -hmm. the, the mainly uh, the North schools. Right. I, 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 I don't want to get somebody else's territory, but. And I go to like 12, 13 middle schools. Mm -hmm. Do you go to um, Lincoln High School or Wilson High School? I don't go down there. It's See, we got some other posts in Portland. We, mm -hmm. we try to uh, mm -hmm. keep it, uh, you know, in the post area. Mm -hmm. I mean, in but we, it's competition. We, we service North it is, North it is com East. But it is competition across the board. Well, yeah. Okay, okay. But I, I, take, I take information in every year. Mm -hmm. It's sad to say last year... The Voice of Democracy High School, and I'm also judging for our whole district mm -hmm. in Portland. The mm -hmm. whole city of Portland, I had four entries in the Voice, four of, entries. Voice of Democracy. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why we're making the point here. That's, uh, you, see, you see what I'm saying? It's hard to get into the school. I, I go into schools, and I, you got to get a contact. you got to get somebody to sort of push it in the school, mm -hmm. like a teacher. It's hard to, because yeah. it, there's just so much turmoil in the schools. Mm -hmm. You go there one year and you got to teach it. Well, next year, somebody different. Sure. So, and that's that's the big problem. Well, that's across the board. Even rec recruiters are having some major problems. I got one school that 
the Patriots pen, I have an eighth grade teacher that mm -hmm. she treats it as a class project every year and they, she has all their students write an essay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a Catholic school, but uh, I, I get like close to 60 essays. So what about public schools? Well, that's, that's another thing. I, another as thing. As I say, they, yeah, they, they, yeah, don't, yeah. they don't, they don't, they uh, don't, I take the information and I give them the it's opportunity, it's, it's, but they... Well, just say it like it's real. I mean, yeah. they're anti-military. Yeah. They don't understand the definition of, of, of military. I mean, that, I that's, the, that's the problem. Right. And uh, we can't just have these little reserve ceremonies just among ourselves who's been there. We've got to get out there and let them know. That's why we're doing it here now in the, in the public. They need to know. And they need to know that there were some real folks that were sitting up there in these, in these graves that are sitting up there with right. and, the, and yeah. the Vietnam War aspect of it. And, um, and, and, and knowing that these people are, like I say, it's just an empty situation. <clears throat> and, you know, there's a flyover and this, that, and that. But these are just people who actually participated. They're loved ones. we got to get the other majority of the folks. Young people are growing up today. They don't understand what this is all about. Correct. Well, there's no draft, you know. And yeah. people have forgotten that the effect of the draft. Yeah, oh, it's monstrous. You know, it was monstrous to me. Good stuff, yes, to me I, too. You know, when I, was, when I was 15, 16 years old, uh, the, 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 I was born in 1936, mm -hmm. and I was born an eight-year obligor. Mm -hmm. I had eight years military service to do. So I long ago, in my youth, decided that I was not going to join the Army mm -hmm. and be digging foxholes. Mm -hmm. So that's what the draft, it kept me in school as long as possible. After high school, I went to Lewis and Clark College for a couple mm -hmm. of years. But then when my draft number got really close, I went on active duty in the Navy mm -hmm. because I had been in the Navy Reserve. Mm -hmm. So the draft that they don't have nowadays had a humongous uh, uh, effect on young people in those days. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was born an eight-year obligor. Mm -hmm. Were you? No. See, these people aren't born nowadays with obligated military right. service. Right. So right. it's strictly volunteer. Know what you're doing when you mm -hmm. volunteer. Mm -hmm. Very important, very important. Very important. Bruce, why don't you share a little bit about, you, you're a Vietnam vet, right? Yes. Share a little bit, uh, what's your background over there? You, well, I, tour. I went to OCS to start with. I went to artillery OCS, got commissioned to the Signal Corps, and I went to avionics school because they needed avionics officers in Vietnam. And I get mm -hmm. to Vietnam, and they say, well, we're going to put you in a supply and maintenance battalion up in Play Coup. <laughs> So I basically was a junior officer, so I did all the additional duties and paid the troops and took care of the mess halls and the motor pools and supervised all that kind of stuff. And I spent 16 months in play coup, and then I spent about six weeks at a, at a signal unit down in Saigon uh, for my last six weeks. And ended up even commanding the unit for a couple of weeks because the CO had to go R and R and R. But it was a signal company and uh, mm -hmm. we, we supported the 525th military intelligence group so uh, we had signal sites all over Vietnam that collected sure. uh, info and sent it into the mm -hmm. headquarters so I, had, I, I was really involved with that keeping these signal sites going and mm -hmm. the commanders were really it's very important work very important <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. I, I was just a lieutenant you know, I had to go to these staff meetings with all these Colonels and oh, yeah. majors, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and I'd get asked more questions than any of them. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, that, that was sort of. And then I came back. I was up at Fort Lewis for a year and a half before I got rifted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, he, he makes a good point because even I was the same boat. I went to avionics school myself, and um, and I basically was on in the blue boxes. Basically, I was in I was sort of like a flight instructor, so to speak, mm -hmm. and people, blew, they basically flew in uh, navigation, stuff like that, within this simulator. It was a simulator. And, um, but it was kind of interesting, I, like he was saying, I was a little bit more matured, so I always got the CAO, COs of the units. Yeah. They all had to qualify on it, whether it be an F-4, uh, a CH-46, these are like helicopters, things of that nature. They'd have to come in and mm -hmm. go through the whole process. And since I was a little older, I was able to out communicate it with the, the colonels and this, that, and the other. But then all of a sudden, one day, um, Vietnam broke up and broke out, and, and they sent me down to, to Da Nang, down at Marble Mountain. My MOS wasn't there. But typically, at the Corps, they give you a job. Yeah. So there I sat. 
and you know getting hit every night when when, when he, I was there. But I, you know you're constant, you're a trooper, you know you're a ground pounder. Anybody that's in the corps is a ground pounder. You're supposed to know what they have to do. But anyway, it was kind of unique that. Uh, but I, I spent the time. Then I came back. Then I got into recruiting. They thought I was really excited. Mm -hmm. yeah, got me in the recruiting duty, and I came to Portland, Oregon, of all places. In like, fact, I still remember that day when they said that when I said, "Bruce," uh, I said, "Where am I going to go?" He said, "Well, Bruce, you're going to be up in up in Washington." I thought it was Washington D.C. I was going to be with my <laughs> buddies. I said, "No, you're going to be on the other end of the world, <laughs> up in the Pacific Northwest." I said, "Where is that?" I said, "Well, they gave me the globe, and I checked it out, and here I am in Portland, Oregon. I'm still here, still recruiting." I'm still recruiting, right? We're still recruiting. So it I was a fortunate Don, assignment. Very, very fortunate yeah. assignment. I, I met Colonel Don Dupay here now, yeah. and, I, and General General Bruce Hall, and <laughs> I mean, this has been a great day for us, these guys, guys. But anyway, just on a little side, just a little side note to just let you know that, uh, uh, that there's this, uh, there was some benefits yeah. uh, to this to, to the military and the background and whatever. Everybody should know there was a Cold War. There was definitely you a know, Cold War. Gee whiz, there yeah. was a Cold there's War. A cold, there's you know. a Cold War, but there's a Cold War now. Mm -hmm. And all due respect, uh, when you think about other nations, yeah. when you think about Israel, I mean, uh, in that area, everybody is a military person. They're yeah. all they're yeah. all military, all signed up the whole nine yards. But then you start thinking about our country. We were three three hundred some million strong, and but then on the other side of it, you got India and whatever. They got one point yeah. two, one point three billion people, and China's got about another one point three billion people. And here we are, you know. And but we are the we are the the focal point. We are the point. For all these countries and nations, that, that it's, it's very important. We, we play a very important role. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's nothing wrong with serving, if you will, and and so. And there's nothing wrong with displaying a, an American flag yeah, on yeah. your property if yeah. you want to. You yeah. read these stories about um, various states, and it's happened in the South. People putting out their American flag and yeah. having their neighbors, who may be Middle Eastern or whatever tell them to take it down because they find it offensive. Yeah. I find it offensive that anyone would find the American flag offensive. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, we're just going to get back into yeah. into what is what this country, and educate them. <clears throat> yeah. We've got to educate them. Everybody wants to come to this country. So right. Bottom line, you need to understand there's a definition for doing that. There's a, there's a reason. There's a, and that's why it's so important that we're spending the time talking about Memorial Day. It's not, like I said, as, as Teresa said, this is not just about barbecue. Right. It's not about just barbecue and just taking the day off yeah. and going <laughs> fishing and golfing and things of that nature. Uh, in fact, even not just a parade. There's a history there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd like there's to see. There's a history for you. There's a history for that, me. Exactly. So therefore, it needs to be in the schools. Mm -hmm. It needs to start from grade, from from first grade, if you will, as far as I'm concerned. Sure. And just educate, educate our food because they are the future. And the hi and the history of Memorial Day needs to be very put much into so. The schools because the, I can remember being a child. I didn't know Memorial Day was created by African Americans. Yeah, see? Now that's a good thing. Yeah. See, people it is. didn't even think of that. In fact, yeah. we just talked a little bit about it, but they but they've been writing it over here, and mm -hmm. and so we need to understand that that we're all involved in a lot of things. There's, there's a meaning for and a reason for why we're still here. Yeah. But as a result of that. There was definition before we all got here and got together. We had to fight for that stuff. We yeah. had to fight for those those, those positions. And now here we are today, and and now I'm saying the benefit now is that we need to educate. Mm -hmm. So Portland Public Schools, and uh, I know you're having a problem with the water pipes right now. Boy, are they? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Huh? Well, we've asked the question, and we we got to spend some time on that. Uh, we're just making a little side note from the standpoint of Portland Public Schools, uh, yeah. having a little problem with the with the rust of uh, lead. And in the pipes, and, they, and all of a sudden they. I mean, they had a picture of Rose City Park School where I went. Jesus Christ! Wow. Lead in the water. Wow. The only lead when I went there was in my pencil. Oh my God! Yeah. Oh, <laughs> well, we better wash the pencil. Anyway, <laughs> let's get down another day. But look, we're gonna take a short break. We're gonna take a short break, and then we're gonna come back, and we might expand on these other things. Really, we need to do that yeah. a little bit. Bruce, I want to thank you for coming with us. I appreciate that very much, and, and thanks for the, for the folks. And by the way, I might make mention about the fact that the service, basically for veterans, if you will, we'll talk a little bit more about that. They can get you benefits and this, that, and the other. That's provided by the VFW. Yeah. They've, got a, they've got a unit in every VA, very VA that you can go to. We'll talk a little bit more about that, okay? We'll be right back. We'll take a short break. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend.
Welcome back again to Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, and uh, and I've got my guests here. I, I call them co-producers now. I mean, they're, they're hosts now. Been here so long, whatever. <coughs> got Don Dupay and Teresa Dupay, and uh, and I guess you just we just spent some time talking about Memorial Day. Yeah, that's the history book. In fact, all you have to do is guess what? You can just sit down there if you got one of these devices. You just Google it. You can just Google it. The Memorial Day, and then it'll come up. I'll tell you about the, the background of Memorial Day and the whole nine yard. And the same thing with the VFW. You can Google the veterans of foreign war and it'll give you the whole spill about the veterans of foreign war. And then the same thing about the burial sites, if you will, like yeah. the Willamette Cemetery and, and the Vietnam area here in the Portland metro area. You can Google that also too and get some background on that aspect of it. But there are a lot of benefits, if you will. You know, when I say benefits, I mean at the, at the site itself where people are, are buried. Many, many veterans today and their relatives and families don't know sure. that that service exists at no cost. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can actually bury your loved one who happens to be a vet there at the, at the, at the site. My and father's there. Your father's yes, there? Yes, my father. Wow, wow. My partner's there. Mm -hmm. my, pro my police partner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Frank Josetis. Frank Josetis is up there. Mm -hmm. He was in the Coast Guard. Yeah. Well, he, so I, I, that's yeah. why I posted my son being there, and mm -hmm. times I, I didn't want to say anything about that that whole issue. Yeah. And uh, then I got involved in that whole piece because when he when he passed away, I didn't know PTSD existed. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I found out. You know, all of a sudden, wow, this hits me. And then I've been basically PTSD promoter from that day yeah. on because folks our age, you know, like Don and myself mm -hmm. and whatever, uh, you have benefits that are sitting there and. And we are, we, we, we've had some really struggles, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And so then by chatting and talking about it, and yeah. they provide those services a bad way, that's part of some of the benefits you get when you, it, PT, it's not just a rip-off aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You I helped mean, you helped Don get his, you know, his veterans. Yeah, yeah uh, very much so. And, and, insurance and, and, and settlement. And, and, very important, very yeah. important. You can go to school, you yeah. can know, and then yeah, VFW is part of that deal because I went to a VFW person who basically provided the services and basically sat down mm -hmm. with me and, and went through my DD-214 and looked at my past and my background and, and shown that, in fact, that I could actually use some of the services. And sure. it, it's, it's a wealth of services that are there. You, yeah. can, you can go to school. You can do a number of things. If you're married, mm -hmm. there, there's benefits there. So it's just not a, it's just not a whatever. You know, plus, in fact, a lot of these guys are of age now. They like, don't have that much time to live anyway. You know, aspect mm -hmm. of it. So it's just kind of a another way, if you will, of of uh, offsetting some of the stresses and the things sure. that one goes through. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would encourage you to go on and Google this kind of stuff. And um, and uh, it's a beautiful facility, by the way, the Willamette National yes, Cemetery. Yes, it is. It's a beautiful place located <coughs> at Mount Scott, OF Mount Scott there. And but Google, go out and check it out. Just go out and check it out. And uh, another thing is, if, if you've got your, your loved one buried uh, somewhere else, like you go to the normal deal, you can actually uh, get that person, you can actually go to Willamette, go through the process, and get the person moved over and, and actually bury it at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if it was a, a husband and, and whatever, uh, if, if let's say your mom is still living and, and all of a sudden something happens to her, she can actually have, you can actually have your mom buried with your dad. Yeah. You know, with, with 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 her husband, if you will. That's a that's an interest. That's a good piece. And then even if your son, for instance, like in my particular case, if anything happens to me, I mean, I can, uh, my I can actually have, have it said that my, I could be buried with my son. Sure. Because he's a he was a military person too. So so there are some things that one needs to look yeah. at, and, and it's so close by. It's very comforting for me to know that I can be buried somewhere. Isn't that something? Yes. Some parents important. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Now when you get those notices you get in the mail, yeah. you yeah. Get, when you reach 65, yeah. you automatically start yeah, getting, yeah. oh, you're going to be dying next week? Yeah. We want you to start paying before you get there. I got one about a month ago. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm 50 now. I got geez. one a month oh, ago. Oh, geez, they're really getting good now. Yeah. The, the baby boomer kids, now they want your money. <laughs> <laughs> so you, what are you going to do? Buy your mountain or something? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but no, but but in all due respect, there's some services there, and, and you just need to be aware of the fact that yeah. uh, uh, that, that they are there, and and then the other thing is about honoring and, and getting that education about sure. what what is what, defining it, what it means, and what it meant to this country, and how we honor our vets, etc. Very very much, very very important. So, so now with that, we've we've discussed that. We we've, uh, we've uh, like I said, you can go to, go to the 
to the Facebook site, if you will, go to Facebook, Oregon Voters Digest, and you can get this show. If you if you missed anything that we've had over the last 30 minutes, you can kind of review that a bit, and we've given you some information, especially the history of the, the, the Memorial yeah. Day. That's a very, very important piece. I'm and very thankful for the benefits that I have now at my age, yes. what I, which I didn't really think about much when I was 23 or 4 years mm -hmm. old running around Germany. But now I have wonderful medical I have uh, a wonderful pension, so I'm, I'm really thankful that the military did right by me, you know, and I did right by them. Yep, yep, you did. I gave them a lot of time in a yes. dangerous place. Right, right, right. So right, thank right. you. Well, good. Thank you and for like your say, service. And you hear what he said? I'm yep. basically saying the same thing. Yep. Thank you very yep. much. I wouldn't have known about PTSD. Yep. And in all due respect, I'm a little, I was a little disappointed by the fact that I wish I had known it a long time ago. Sure. My son might have been still with me today, you know, so. But it's, it's still well, probably like me. You weren't sure what the hell was wrong with you. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. No, but I'm thinking yeah. about my son. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I knew that he was having all these problems and mm -hmm. sitting up here in the Portland metropolitan area and the, the drugs and yeah. this, that, and the other. But you know, but I hadn't seen him. But I was with him for the last five years. Yeah. And, but the point is that I, you know, now that I, I've got to give it. I'm giving back. Yeah. And I'm yeah. looking for other individuals like yourselves. If you're having problems with uh, trying to educate, let, let, let your son or your loved one know why you're acting the way you are, you need to call your VA. Yeah. Go down there and see your VA. Get your card. Get your VA card. Yeah. In fact, I might add, too, by the way, uh, you know, one of the things that I was talking about, uh, about veterans, uh, uh, the, the folks that are just peddling on the street, you know what I mean? Yes. A lot of them are just basically just trying to eat, yeah. you know, and they're not vets, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I was always concerned about that and was making the point about the fact they should have their ID card yeah. and their DD-214. Well, as I was driving, Kay and I was driving that one day, and, and there was this vet uh, sitting on the side, and I just always stopped. Yeah. I said, are you a vet? And the person would say, well, no, I'm not. Well, you know, hey, you can't do that, bro. Yeah. Hey, but if you are a vet, well, if you got a DD-214, go down there. If not, get in the car. Let's go on down there. But this one vet had his card on his, on his sign. He had his card on his sign. And a DD-214, he had it all right there, and he was saying, I need a contribution. Then we spent a couple minutes, and I said, well, what the heck are you doing out there? If you already know what's going on, you know the access. He said, well, you know, I just need a couple more bucks right now. I'm trying to get to go to school, and I've just qualified for voc -Ed. Okay. Uh, voc -Ed, and I'm going to be going to school. Good. I said, well, that, that, that means about a 1000 bucks a month. Yeah. You got my point? And that's yeah. good that's for him, see? So now he said, I have enough money. I got have a place. I have the place to stay and whatever. Mm -hmm. He said, "That's what I'm doing. I'm just getting preparing myself mm -hmm. to, get, to get into those in that in that situation." Yeah. So, I, so, so it really, it, it really happens. Yeah. And I'm still saying that you know, cause, you know, we ran for for mayor, getting right up into that piece. We yeah. ran for mayor. You, the police commission aspect of it. I'm still saying that, as far as I'm concerned, we want to get everybody off the street. That's how we started. Remember, we started yeah. talking about yeah, that. Yeah, we did. We want to get get folks off these corners and whatever. And and Don, you reminded me and made it a point about the fact that during your day. And in the department, you actually didn't have any peddling on the corners. You picked those folks up. It's against the law to beg on the street. Isn't that something? Yeah. Didn't they, didn't Violation they? of the city ordinance. Wow, wow. And people went to jail for it. And now, retrospect, whether it was good or bad, I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, they got a place to stay. They got off the street. Did it do any good in the long run? I don't know. Probably, how, how, how probably was not. How was the city? Was it a clean city in that particular time? <coughs> well, the downtown didn't have any beggars. No, no beggars? No. I mean, I mean, it, it's in his book, and in the book, um, oh, yeah, he, des it. he describes how his sergeants would tell him that it makes the city look bad. Mm -hmm. And that's kind mm -hmm. of a good point, because mm -hmm. it does make the city look bad, because mm -hmm. it's like, is this how, especially now in 2016, is this how we're dealing with mm -hmm. it? We're just mm -hmm. letting all these people, mm -hmm. including veterans, mm -hmm. just be homeless? Mm -hmm. It's a shame. And it does make the city look bad, especially now. Well, that's, that's another good point I might raise from the standpoint. That history, see? Yeah. You know, because the people who are being elected today, they don't, they don't have that background in history. They weren't mm -hmm. even they, here. That's what yeah. I'm saying. That's, yeah. why we wanted, that's why we went down yeah. to Oregon Public Broadcasting yeah. and suggested that they have a, have two guys like you and I just sitting mm -hmm. down here talking about these yeah. issues. They, I mean, the, 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 in all due respect, the media today wouldn't know how to interview us. That's right, you know. <laughs> One, I wouldn't allow them. <laughs> you know, but the bottom line is really a sad note. They, because yeah. I, I do have some wisdom. You have some background. I have some background. Lots of background. And we're trying to share this with Oregon Public Broadcasting. Oregon 
public broadcasting. No. That, you know, we could have just a little talk show and whatever. Well, naturally, they, they resented that. They resist that aspect of it. But then I can see why, when I look at the board of directors and whatever, they just, they don't have access to, oh. to that entity and, and, the, and, the, and, the, uh, and all these big things. I think that uh, every member of city council should read Don's book behind the badge in River City, mm -hmm. because if you truly want to understand the history of Portland when it concerns police and a bunch of other social dynamics, I think every member of City Hall should read Don's book because mm -hmm. it's it's a very, uh, it's a really important glimpse behind the badge. It gives you know? an, uh, an insight into police culture. Yeah. And that's the only other which option. Is, which is still... Right, it's still there. It's still, still there. there. And, yeah, and, it, yeah. and it's yeah. still relative. Yeah. Yeah. People are constantly yeah. talking yeah. about the whole issue of police. Yeah. And, you know, they're law enforcement officers. <laughs> and we can't have them being the bad guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we got to have... This is part of the system. Yeah. And like yeah. you said, you, you know, you got to have some option. We, we had a we had another option we gave them, and that was OPB. Don yeah. and I said, yeah. talking. we could actually go through the book, yeah. if you will. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, the issue needs to be talked about today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I'm still thinking about the election and thinking about having run for mayor and whatever and, and thinking about that, that whole marketing in terms of how they tend to talk about this particular issue. One incident was the whole issue with Jewel Bailey when they came out with the yeah. big ads, you know, in the, in, the, in the media aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And he had the endorsement of the Portland Police Department. Sure. And then he, That's odd. It was kind of interesting. <laughs> and then he, had, then he had two African Americans mm -hmm. on there, mm -hmm. very notable ones, uh, that were kind of like uh, identified as being anti-police. Yeah. And that was in Commissioner uh, Loretta Smith and and also uh, Joanne Bowman. Yes. Mm, uh, yeah. I.e. the president of the NAACP. Yeah. And and you say you say wait a minute now how can they be endorsing going with someone who, who has a, who has the endorsement of the police of the po department? Police department. <laughs> Uh, and after I didn't see the ads after a bit, for, yeah. uh, but my point is that it's not about these folks; it's just about the education. Mm -hmm. yeah. you just show you how mm -hmm. how far we've gone with the leadership, if mm -hmm. you will, getting in that same rung. So the masses, we're waiting for our voters, our voters. Uh, mm -hmm. Was it uh, with, uh, our ballots? Mm -hmm. And the, most of the people in the ballot, they don't they don't read the news, <laughs> they don't look at people, TV, uh, and this, that, and the other. So so people, uh, people don't understand that police work hasn't changed. No. It's the technology that's mm -hmm. changed. Mm -hmm. You still go out there and you put your hands on and you put them in jail. Mm -hmm. Well, there has been a significant you know? change in the in the way the public perceives the public police. perception mm -hmm. of police. The public yeah. perception of police work because of certain instances of corruption has just been really yeah. ravaged. Yeah. Yeah. And then you yeah, have yeah. police <laughs> hatred and people that um, that one sergeant. And that's a small that was, percentage. Yeah. yeah. That's not it the is. majority but of right. the department. You have what, yeah. what we're going through right now. Here's the police chief. Yeah. Now, you know, right. well, you know, yeah. how does that how does that relate to the community yeah. when they see their very leader mm -hmm. lying, mm -hmm. drunk, mm -hmm. lying on a police report, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you've got the sheriff of Multnomah County under constant pressure for being a bad guy, some mm -hmm. people say. Mm -hmm. Now he's so messed up he's going to retire okay, early. Okay. Here are our two police leaders under under siege. Mm -hmm. How does that look to the community? Wow. My wow. God. Wow. And you know, the, the point you make too also too, now the Portland police chief is appointed. Is appointed. On the sheriff's side is elected. Is elected. Yeah. It needs now to that's stay crazy. That way, yeah. What's the deal on that piece? Well, the sheriff needs Portland to stay has, The Portland police have civil service, and, and they go up through the rank, and, uh, and the highest rank attainable in civil service police is captain. A captain. Anything above that, assistant chief, deputy chief, chief is appointed by the mayor. Okay, okay. So if the mayor appoints you the chief of police, he can get rid of you tomorrow. Okay. But if you're still a captain... You still get your you still get your rank. You can't fire. You can't fire. You can't fire. That's a, um, the only thing that could happen would be if the Bureau of Police Standards and Training decertified the chief as being unfit for police service, mm -hmm. like they did Bernie Justo when okay, he was sheriff. Okay, okay. And that's a possibility. And that's a possibility. Yeah. So wow. because lying on a police report right. is a serious is a crime. Mm. Right. Really. But what well, happens then if he's still on well, the force? But, but I feel sorry for the community. Yeah, oh yeah, that, that, that's a, I feel sorry for the community that they're constantly faced with their, their police leaders with some kind of bullshit. Well, the other yeah. thing, though, is that, is that Larry O'Day is very well liked yeah, he's by a lot well of people. I've heard that too. I don't think he's, yeah. don't think but, he's a bad person. But, it's just but you know, you start drinking. You say, if, you, if in fact you, you're drinking yeah. and you're getting excited and you start arguing, right. I mean, if, you, if, you get, if you're armed, I mean that's a different ball games and that's a, the, the old concealed weapon. You got to you got to have yeah. some within reason, right? You yeah. got my point. 
But boy, that's a heavy piece. But I'm just saying. Yeah. But now the county is basically trying to force the 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 election, for, force not having the election of a sheriff. No, that's and, totally and, wrong. And, and you know yeah. that, now that this doesn't help the situation at all. That's totally now wrong. this guy, I think that's probably one of the reasons why well, he said, "Well, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna have to let it go as far as the sheriff." That goes. situation is dangerous because conflict of interest it, it enters into that picture if if they try to make it so that the sheriff is appointed. Mm -hmm. he, it needs to be an election. I don't think they can do it. I don't think. It's, it, I think it's too illegal for them to even try it, and it, do it. It doesn't need to change. It needs to stay the way it is because because he's just, the only official that's, that's only beholden to the elect. Electorate. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. the sheriff, and he has more power than anybody in the county. Anybody in the in the county in mm -hmm. his state, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, at least powerful. One, well, at least one thing, he he basically selected Reese, who was a former yeah. chief. He selected yeah. him to, yeah. to, to replace him. Yeah. It wasn't somebody. I that, heard that. And yeah, yeah, I don't know it, what's it, happening with that. Well, it, it, that's, he's going to be. It, he's going to be the sheriff. He's going to be the in sheriff, August. Yeah. In August. Oh, so he is. This, this wow. year, this year, yeah. this August. That's and now right. he's on board as a deputy. <laughs> Good for in him. Training. He's yeah. in training. But the bottom line, but then the idea is that where is this other deal about the so what's what's the county's gonna do as far as the those commissioners up there yeah. in, in before them in terms of trying to steal i.e. they they're still pushing this idea of the electorate. Mm -hmm. Of the appoint uh, the, the appointing them, them. So yeah. they can appoint yeah. them and whatever. That's and, wrong. And There's they, so much of that going on anyway. Yeah. There's so much, yeah. you know, uh, somebody up here wants to control law enforcement mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and that's wrong and you know another thing about at that, at that level that's wrong another thing about uh, Staten um, he's been criticized because he's described as tough and and gruff and stern and I mean come on he's a he's a he's a law enforcement officer that's mm -hmm. the way it is you know it, it, I think that this whole uh, the whole idea of political correctness is just infecting so many different aspects of yeah. our country, including law enforcement. They can't always be like social workers. Mm -hmm. Law enforcement's a tough career. Police officers have to be tough mm -hmm. to survive. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's the most difficult job in the world. Um, so I don't I mean I don't know the whole story about Staten, but you know I mean <coughs> Moose when Charles Moose was the chief of police he was criticized for the same reason mm -hmm. he's gruff he's stern he's terse with the media well of course he is I mean it just seems really stupid to but me but that's, that's it's going and going and going and yeah. going in fact even when I think about um, I was talking to one of the officers the other day and uh, I said it's interesting and uh, he just happened to be an African-American officer aspect of it I said it's kind of interesting how, uh, and I was on the line too uh, for the Harry Jacksons of the world, oh, yeah. trying to get them on the force. Sure. You know, trying to get minorities or getting blacks on the right. force or whatever. Sure. And then they get on the force <laughs> and they're right. treated just so neg more right. negative than the white guy. No, what, Portland has this reputation <laughs> as the people in, in city council and the power players talk about how they want leaders of color yeah, in Portland yeah, and yeah, then when they yeah. get hired, yeah. then they they're, these yeah, people the do this do everything they can yeah. to sabotage yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned Harry Jackson. Oh, yeah, and, I know Harry. I know um, Harry. You know, I learned from Fred Stewart about Harry Jackson's career, and what a great guy. I remember in the late 70s and early 80s the problem that we had in Portland <coughs> with the pimps in North and Northeast Portland, and he mm -hmm. single-handedly changed that yeah. demographic, well, he Harry knew the, Jackson. Well, he was from the community. Yeah. He was born and raised here, yeah. so to speak. You know, and but, he was well known thing, for coming right, hard on. But them. one of the things when Smitty was putting that tool piece together, I mean, they had certain restrictions about, uh, i.e., the heights and this, mm -hmm. that, and the other. Yeah. And Harry was short, if you will, but powerful. We, but, but we, but we fought for yeah. that. Understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and right up front with you, had he not, no respect, yeah. had he not been a minority. Mm -hmm. yeah. He wouldn't have been there. Yeah, I, but, I but saw him a few there. times. I saw him yeah. a few times when I was a lot younger, and I remember he he wasn't the tallest guy, but he was sure powerful looking. Well, the powerful thing yeah. he had, he knew the community. <laughs> See, he, he could drive in that car by himself because yeah. he knew everybody. Yeah. yeah. He knew everybody yeah. on the streets and this, that, and the other, so he didn't have as many of the issues. Yeah. And that's the other thing that I tried to promote many times over. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, you know, you need to try to find as as many people as you can locally, if possible. Absolutely. I, yeah. I can it's remember. I can remember being 13 and 14 and walking downtown by the old old Myron Frank, and there would be three or four of these pimps on the south side mm -hmm. of Myron mm -hmm. Frank, just standing around in their crazy clothes, trying to solicit girls of every color. Mm -hmm. And you don't see that anymore. I th I think Harry. Jackson is just an unsung hero in oh, Portland. Yeah. Good guy. Well, his yeah. sister, his sister's on the force, and, yeah. and they try to get his son on the force, and mm -hmm. I mean that's you know, so that's pretty that's good stuff. 
But but uh, but no. But anyway, law enforcement it's, it's a career and it's a job, if you will. But it's a necessity, mm -hmm. especially yeah. today. You know what I mean? And and then when you think about it, only only in the uh, in the government uh, in a government job, a public job, mm -hmm. well, a government job, that uh, whenever you have a little argument or say something about whether it be race or gender, or this that and the other, you got to pull out the book. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, rather than I'm pissed off, but yeah. I'd rather get myself squared away. Well, you know, we you know how we're in the military. Yeah, there's no such thing. You 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 call the first sergeant or something. <laughs> you did the job, whether yeah. you liked it or not. Yeah. But under today's criteria in those arena, you pull out the book. Yeah, he's got to be able to say the right word. Mm -hmm. How you yeah. do this, this, yeah. that, and the other. And is that a good thing, a bad thing? Well, let's have a discussion on it. But right now, I don't know that it's really caused a problem with O'Day, because mm -hmm. when I got the background, this guy, this guy was a straight up guy. A really neat guy. That's People all I've ever him. heard is that and he they, was a really good and, cop. And then all of a sudden now you're going to project him having a, a firearm shooting somebody right. drunk. Right. Well, then, but on the other hand, it's still going through. If you, I guess, you the investigative just yeah. that. Yeah. But then, but then what happens is that if that wasn't the fact, then the fact comes out and say, hey, just accidentally shot the person. I mean, some gun fell. And when it, then what happened? His reputation is gone. Yeah. It'd be better just going on throw it right up front. Here it yeah. is. I mean, two person that got shot, the person who did the shooting, throw it out there if yeah. that's the case. But uh, but on the other hand, it, it's a, it's a tough situation aspect yeah. of it. And I guess the let's see, what was that? That was the other thing I was going. We, we talked about that piece. We started out and we ended up on the the last half hour with the idea of the, the the lead in the pipe aspect of it. Yeah. I mean, you would think after the whole issue in was it Michigan? That was in Michigan. Yeah, especially after yeah. Michigan. Yeah. 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 I mean, look like it look like in Flint, Michigan, Flint, Michigan. Look like every state in the union yeah. probably picked up the phone and said, yeah. "How's our water?" And they all yeah. went out there and yeah. the water. Yeah. But in but in Portland, Oregon, the superintendent of schools knew when they checked the deal out, there was lead in the lead in the water. More water. Rather yeah. than saying, "Hey, look, we got to do something and now." And for what schools? Oh well, Portland, Portland. I don't know which one. What schools? I don't know. It was several schools. It was two or three schools. She, I believe it because yeah, two, I can remember being in Chapman Elementary in the '70s, and the water always tasted like metal. Yeah, but my point is that <laughs> the issue came up. Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, and, the, and they didn't do the right. They thing. didn't do the right mm -hmm. thing. They didn't do the right. So thing. what do you do with a situation like yeah. that? Like, I'm thinking about old days. So they're telling him mm -hmm. he needs to get fired. And, I, and yeah. what about the superintendent of schools? Right. And she, right. Knew. Right. she knew. She knew. She knew exactly what the deal was. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. the deal? What about that deal? We got to have her on the show and ask her. Yeah. Yeah. Why Let's didn't you do up. something about that? <laughs> Let's yeah, call but, her up. But you, that's a, it should be a criminal offense, negligence, mm -hmm. something or other. But you are an employer. You're the taxpayer. What do you? What should you do, sir? Uh, what you're the employer. Do? What should you do with this employee? <laughs> Okay, all right, should be gone, right? You're gone. Okay, I mean, that, so that means gone. they should know better because, mm -hmm. I mean, with the situation that was already exploding, the yeah. whole state is being yeah. looked at. Yeah. Yeah. Every state in the union should have done the same thing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now I'm thinking about my water. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I want to check river. out the water bureau. I mean, well, well I tell you what. Uh, well, uh, she's sucking out of the river. <laughs> I think that's what his mouth should. I think that, that's what I may be doing. Yeah. I may be getting. I mean, but my point is that it is an issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, uh, and. Uh, of course it's an issue. It's a serious problem. Yeah, it's a very, very serious problem. And for some strange reason, our employees are figuring as if they're running all the show. Mm -hmm. See, I mean, I, that's, I'm just throwing it out that way from the standpoint. We pay the bill. Right. But they run the show. Right. But the bottom line, we got to get back to standards. It's a very, mm -hmm. very, very important piece. Now, let's, we got a couple of minutes. I guess we got about a, about a minute or so. We're getting close to the uh, time, about, about a minute or so. Let, let's talk a little bit about, I got about, about a minute. Got about, about a minute. So okay, this good. is Behind the Badge Real in quick, River right. City, a Portland Police Memoir. This is the second edition. Um, it has an additional story um, about a man that died and Don had to watch him die basically. It has four new photographs. Um, it's been polished a little more, <laughs> um, and it is it's currently the, uh, available. Long-awaited second edition. The long-awaited second yeah, edition. Yeah. It took me about a year to convince Don to write the story, the, mm. the additional story that's in here, because it's a very graphic story, and it's a very sad story about mm. what police officers often have to face in their career, mm -hmm. which is watching people die. Um, the other book is the book that I co-authored with J.D. Chandler, mm -hmm. Murder and Scandal in Prohibition Portland, mm -hmm. Sex, Vice and Misdeeds, and Mayor Baker's Reign. And this is about the history of corruption within the Portland Police Bureau during mm -hmm. the 1920s and 1930s. This is kind of a precursor, yeah. Yeah. 30s, 40s, and 50s, right. to mm -hmm. this, which starts in the 60s. Right, right, right. right. 
you know, and can, the corruption can yeah. JD and you guys. The, the you corruption guys good, that yeah. was within PPB during the 20s and 30s during Prohibition was much, much more complex mm -hmm. than the corruption during the 50s and the 60s, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Mm -hmm. It really was. It's a really good book. It's very entertaining. Um, it's, it's, uh, we got lucky. We found some really, really valuable documents mm -hmm. hidden in some of the uh, police personnel files. Mm -hmm. So, well, you know, the interesting, again, we're talking about history. Mm -hmm. yeah, history. This, this is a positive yeah. thing because, yeah. because, you know, as time goes, things happen. So, so this should not be taken as a negative or right. being anti, no. but right. this is just something should that be, educates yeah. us. In fact, it should be in, it should be in the in the in so the, it should be instructional in because too. yeah, it should be instructional. Most of the people that are in charge in City Hall now weren't alive then. Right. Or weren't wow. in Portland wow. for sure. Wow. Yeah. This is wow. a good book, and it uh, it's um, so you get so you get good reviews. I mean, you, you know, yes. I know I know we're discussing we have a it lot here. more yeah. blurbs. Uh, yeah, right. and I yeah. and I know that I've talked to officers and whatever they liked the idea. I mean, sure. I mean that naturally they weren't there doing that that time frame, mm -hmm. but the fact made it gives them some back. Background. Sure. Several history, Portland police not officers. Not to do certain things. Several yeah. Portland police officers have read it, and we have some officers in Beaverton police that are reading yeah, it, right. um, and that are really enjoying it. Good. Well, hey, we've come to the end of this. This has been great. Yeah. yeah. Again, folks. Hey, Memorial Day is tomorrow. Please go out and see your loved ones. Okay. With that, take care. And remember what it's about. Yes. Right. That's a very important. Remember piece. what it's about. And hey, that history. The history in terms of who started this whole thing. Right. African Americans have got to be proud of that. Right. There's, right. there's some good history there. That's right. why it should be taught in school. Mm -hmm. A whole bunch of stuff. Our history should be in the classroom. Right. Folks, take care. I'll see you next week. Have a good one.